If you eat a lot of saturated fat, then you start to crave fatty foods because your body is full of bacteria that's been fed by fatty foods and it's screaming out, give me more fatty foods. If it, and same with sugar. The sugar bacteria are fed by the sugar we eat and then we have cr more cravings for it because our gut is, is so um, populated by that kind of bacteria instead of the bacteria that love carrots, the fiber and carrots and That's broccoli right. and such. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, there's such a brain gut connection. You know, we think with our thoughts, with our brain, but the gut is in constant communication with the brain. There's a, the gut is the second most innervated organ in the body. So after mm -hmm. the brain and the spinal cord, the gut has the most amount of nerves. Mm -hmm. And so the brain, the spinal cord, and there is uh, innervation all along the GI tract, and there's constant communication. So the gut is in some kind of a homeostasis, and it basically may be communicating with the brain and saying, oh, I'm used to this type of sugar. Give mm -hmm. me, give me more, give me more. And there's stimulation of certain neurons and nerves and biochemicals that are being produced. Now, if you cut that off, you know, there's, there's some kind of, there's cravings. And people often say when they, they stop eating sugar, they, they can't stand it for a while. They keep craving it. And, you know, but after a while, perhaps through the repopulation of the gut microbiome, you stop craving those bad things mm -hmm. because now you have a, a totally different gut microbiome and that perhaps switches what's being produced as far as neurotransmitters and hormones, which communicate with the brain mm -hmm. and your cravings change. But you're absolutely right. I believe that most of of it has to do with the gut microbiome. So I, I think this is just one of the most fascinating fields because it's, I mean, we're, we're, we're learning so much so fast in, 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 this, in this arena. And the fact that our gut can discern everything from our mood to our weight to our uh, protecting our cells, even to glowing skin, having glowing skin. Um, it, what is the most surprising uh, bit that has come out in the let's say the last couple of years about what the gut discerns in our in our body and what was the most exciting you know part of that surprise? You know, my my biggest wow factor was the fact that the gut is very important in actually affecting distal organs. I mean, mm -hmm. who would have thought that the gut has something to do with cardiovascular disease and lupus and autoimmune diseases? I mean. 20 years yeah. ago, this was like a foreign topic. And recently, it's just, it's it's crazy that we, we used to not even know about the power of the gut microbiome and how important the barrier, the gut microbiome is in relation with the gut and the integrity of the gut lumen is very important. So I think the biggest wow factor is how important nutrition is in the diversity of the gut microbiome and how important fiber is in mm -hmm. promoting that health um, and the effects of it to uh, in the rest of the body. And how much fiber should we uh, aim? I know everybody's different. So let's talk about uh, the three of us. Should we aim for about 100 grams? Somebody that's brand new, that might give them a little bit of trouble <laughs> up in the right. rumble. But um, yeah, sometimes, you know, as you know, they're, they're, they've done studies in uh, uh, Africa where they eat a predominantly plant based diet and they compared these children um, to uh, uh, children who live in St. Louis where they would eat a uh, predominantly Western diet. And predominantly fast food diet. Yeah, fast that's the food part diet. of country I'm from, and that's <laughs> a lot of drive throughs there. Which means what? A lot of saturated fats, yep. right? And so what they saw is that there are a certain type of um, uh, fiber breaking, uh, some type of bacteria that break down fiber that are missing in the uh, stool of oh. the uh, kids in St. Because they never had to break down fiber. They don't really have to do that so their body doesn't exactly really so there's expansion of the bacteria that you use most often right mm -hmm. if you're eating a bunch of lactose sugar you're going to have a lot of enterococcus now if you're eating a ton of fiber you're going to have bacteria that mainly break down that plant cellulose so the westernized kids do not have that so 
my theory is that this whole bloating occurs because when you you suddenly start, you know, wanting to go on this health journey and then you suddenly start eating a ton of fiber, you're not giving your body the opportunity to colonize with these health promoting bacteria that would be responsible for breaking down fiber. So it's I whereas some people go over, uh, you know, whole food plant based overnight, most people can't. So we really have to be realistic because people do get excessive bloating and gas and very they get very uncomfortable so I always say you know start with look imagine guys most Americans get about 10 to 15 grams of fiber per day which is like what you and I would get in our breakfast which is very little right so I I'd say you know go from 10 to 20 and then 20 to 30 and just slowly uh, crowd out the bad stuff, bring in more fiber foods and crowd out the bad stuff. And the more plant-based you get, the better it, better it is, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, I, I tell my ethical vegans, go vegan. I mean, you know, do it slow, but do it. Um, and I tell my patients who don't want to be 100% plant-based, I, get, I say be as plant-based as you possibly can because you want to eat more fiber. I, you know, it depends on how many calories you eat to answer your question. Mm -hmm. If you're eating a couple of thousand calories, 100 grams of fiber is very achievable, easy. If you're eating 1,200 calories, it may be a little bit hard to get 100 grams. So I'd say about 30 to 100 grams is totally uh, something that most people get who Mm -hmm. are Mm plant-based. And that's what about in terms for? of Metamucil and those kind of things that people just say, oh, well, I'll just one. add fiber mm-hmm. and then I'll have this uh, chocolate shake on the side. <laughs> right. uh, how, does that help the gut microbiome if you do it that way? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good question. Generally speaking, when I talk to my patients, when I say eat fiber, I mean food, Vi- vitamin rich, fiber rich, nutrient rich foods. However, you know, when they've done studies and they would add um, Metamucil or some other fiber source, they have shown there's stool bulking, less diarrhea, less constipation, and it actually helps. And believe it or not, it's really hard for people sometimes uh, who are severely constipated. Um, Even people who are plant-based, sometimes they they have such bad constipation that they actually need more help. So you can't cure everything with food, obviously. I mean, that's where we have to use medications. Hey, Um, folks. Okay. Back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long. Does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org and include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.